Hi everyone and welcome to a series of videos for people interested in getting hands-on with Data Cloud. My name is Dave Norris, and in the previous few videos we've been exploring the Interactions SDK. We're using a fictitious hotel chain called Coral Cloud Resorts to do that, because ultimately they want to be able to capture clicks on their featured experience on the website to be able to dynamically change the content. In this video we'll be adding the code to capture those click events. And then we'll be showing you how you can federate queries across multiple connected data sources in Data Cloud using data graphs. So without further ado, let's get started. This is the data model we used in a previous video for our data ingestion and mapping exercise. We already have data flowing in from the website for website users, and we already have products flowing in from Service Cloud. What we're focused on in today's video is how we send these website click events from the website. If we've set up our data mapping correctly, they will flow into a data model object called Product Browse Engagement. To start us off, let's look at the Data Cloud Reference Guide to look at what an interaction event specification actually looks like. When we set up the Coral Cloud Website Connector in a previous video, if you remember, we specified a schema and that consisted of a number of event specifications that we expected to receive from the website. When we set up the data streams, we selected a subset of those events, and one of them was the catalog interaction event. This is what we're going to use when a customer interacts with those featured experiences on the homepage, but it could be a product or a blog post. If we scroll down to have a look at the detail, you can see for an interaction, we're going to give it a name, and then we're going to give it this catalog object, which is going to consist of a number of attributes. The documentation shows a retail example. For Coral Cloud, we're just going to be passing the experience ID that someone's clicked on. So let's go take a look at the code that we've implemented. Coral Cloud have a React component that handles the featured experiences that appear on the website. And here you can see that when someone clicks on an experience, we're setting up an event payload that passes in an interaction name here called view experience object, and then we're passing in the ID of the experience. It's important to note here that the SDK, the interactions SDK is gonna auto capture things like the event ID, the device ID, which remember ties back to an individual, and the date time it happened, as well as lots of other things. Then we're gonna call the send event method, passing in our payload, and just for the demonstration, we'll log something to the console saying that we have sent a web engagement event to Data Cloud and include the payload. Let's move into the website, open up DevTools so we can see this console log statement. And remember, just like previous videos, debug mode is on in the Interactions SDK so we can actually see the payload that's sent to Data Cloud. Here's Coral Cloud's website in a previous video. We already talked about consent and identity. So I've already given consent for personalization and signed in as a sample guest at Coral Cloud called Sofia Rodriguez. We'll simulate Sofia looking on the website and then clicking on the Teens Wilderness Camp experience, indicating she's interested in learning more. So when we click the experience, you'll see that the send event log message we included in the code is now present. We can see that it's included details, things like the product that Sofia clicked in. And we can see that the Interactions SDK has outputted what was actually sent to Data Cloud. So let's move from the website into Data Cloud to see what happened in the underlying data. So moving into Query Editor in Data Cloud, I've written a very basic SQL query here. If my click event's been mapped correctly, it should appear in a data model object called Product Browse Engagement. So when we run this, you should see one record, assuming you've only clicked on one thing. I can see it's got the View Experience Object Event Type and the experience code is set to the experience I clicked on, Teens Wilderness Camp. And I can also see the device ID, so the ID that was attributed to the person browsing the website. So that's a pretty basic SQL query. Let's make sure that we can tie that device ID to a known unified profile. This time our SQL query has a few more joins. I'm still starting in product browse engagement, but I'm joining in an individual, and ultimately, looking up a unified individual via the linkage object. I've also tied in the product data model object because ultimately the experience code I've clicked on ties to an underlying product. And when I run this, 
I can not only still see the experience that was clicked on the device ID, but now I'm tying it back to a known person, Sofia Rodriguez. Now writing SQL like that is a great way to learn how data is flowing through data cloud. And you can see that we now have the foundation, at least from a data perspective, to know which users are clicking on which featured experiences. And that's what we're gonna use as the basis to drive dynamic content to make the website feel more personalized. Now, writing SQL with a large number of joins isn't gonna scale and it's not gonna be particularly performant. Thankfully, in Data Cloud, there is a better way and that's using data graphs. So in Data Cloud, we're gonna to head to Data Graphs and just show you what it looks like. We're gonna click New, we're gonna start from scratch, and then select we want a real-time data graph. Ultimately, this use case is gonna support dynamically changing the content of the website based on interaction. So we want that to be sub-second. We're gonna give the data graph a name. We'll call it guest profile and base it on a unified individual. Click next. We have some options to change consumption limits. We're just gonna leave them as the default. On the left-hand side, this is the canvas that's gonna show us the relationships between the data model objects. And on the right-hand side, we can select the attributes to be made available for each data model object as we add them. So for individual, I probably wanna select first name and last name as being available. And it's not just data model objects we can see, we can see enriched data. In the previous video, we added spend profile by guest. We can add that to our data graph. So we can now return lifetime stays and lifetime value for each unified guest. Then I'm gonna to link to the individual table. And we saw how this relationship worked when we talked about identity resolution before adding the related information. Now we brought in reservations from Amazon S3 and that's available here for me to select. I'm not gonna add it to this data graph because we don't need it for our use case. But if I was really creating a unified profile for each guest, I could probably add multiple data model objects here to make it easier for people. I'm gonna select product browse engagement. That's the data model object that's getting populated when people are interacting with the website. And the product browse engagement data model object is related to a product. So we can select product name to be returned and perhaps the engagement types and channels and the product view URL that we're sending when we send an event via the interactions SDK. That's all we need to do. We're gonna save and build. And then when this is finished, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we query this via an API call. It takes a little bit of time for your data graph to become active. For me, it was about five minutes, but once it does say active, you're now ready to query it. So let's open Postman to see what it looks like. In Postman, what I've done is I've specified the API I need to retrieve a named data graph. So in our case, it was guest profile and I'm passing in a unified individual ID since that was our primary data model object. And this corresponds to Sofia Rodriguez, the guest we've been using for our examples. If we send this in, what's returned is a JSON blob and it includes all of the attributes we specified in the data graph. So the individual's first name and last name. We can see our calculated insights for lifetime stays and lifetime value. And if we scroll down, we can now see the interactions that guest is having on the website because we can now see Teens Wilderness Camp show up just like it did when we manually wrote an SQL query. And that's it for today's video. We're capturing those clicks on Coral Cloud's website and that means we can now attribute which users are clicking on which featured experiences. Instead of writing complicated SQL with multiple joins that isn't gonna scale or be performant, we created a real-time data graph to be able to really query across any connected data source. And we're gonna use that data graph in the next video to dynamically change the content that's shown on Coral Cloud's website, so check it out. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Salesforce Developer YouTube channel for more content like this.